Coming up next, on the spot. Lace up the high tops. We're taken to the sky with both NBA ballers Phenom and Rebound. Brad Shoemaker will go online with Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence and dive into Tales of Legendia. Plus, Jeff Gerstmann will show you how his import copy of Bite and Hell 2000 can help you cook ramen. Just add water. We're live and on the spot. <laughs> Welcome to On The Spot. Uh, I'm Ryan Davis. I'm here with Jeff Gersman. Jeff, how's it going? It's going well, Ryan. How you doing? I'm excellent. We're having an excellent show for you today. today an excellent show. Phenomenal for you today. A phenomenal show. It's going to be superb. <laughs> Su I know. Okay, I know. all right. Words, what, words all around. You better tell me what's on the show then well, if you're going to throw around Solid, words like we've that. We've got Tales of Legendia, but most of all, first off, we've got some NBA ballers with Rich Gallup. Rich, what's going on? Hey, fellas, thanks for starting the show off. I'm here with my man, John Vignocchi of Midway. Hello, John. What's up, dude? Welcome from Chicago. We got NBA Ballers Phenom, NBA Ballers Rebound. They're both going to be here. We're going to play them. World premiere exclusive. All those adjectives you can use for such things. <laughs> Let's fire it up, shall we, John? Let's do it. All right, cool. First, we're going to play NBA Ballers Phenom on the Xbox. All right, so check it out. This is the new installment of NBA Ballers called NBA Ballers Phenom. Um, NBA Ballers, the first installment obviously was you know the first one-on-one -on -one basketball game out in a long time. Um, had a story mode in it. Ballers 2 continues that tradition, but probably our biggest gameplay feature that we have now is a two-on-two -two gameplay mode. Nice. Now, in the last game you got the occasional like one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one match. Right. But this is now straight up two-on-two. -two. Well, it has the one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one and one-on-one -on -one right. and two-on-two. -two. Nice. Right. Say that three times fast. One, one on one, one on two, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So what, what's this right here? We're picking um, our teams? Right here, yeah. We're at the uh, player select screen. I'm just going to breeze through this real quick. Um, all of the levels from Ballers 1 are in Ballers Phenom. Um, some of them are being touched up a little bit by our art team. Ricky Boronat and you guys, you rule. <laughs> I got I, I to gotta ask, actually, how many of those levels were like based on, on reality? Like, does Scotty Pippen really have a sweet yacht? Yeah. Like that day? Belmont Harbor. Really? Yeah. Does yeah. It, look, it looks like that? Yeah. Or is, is that just like, you know? What do you think? Yeah. Or have you been? Well, we, <laughs> we went to Pippins, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. All right, sure. Yeah. I believe you. All right, so where are we, where are we playing? Where are we playing? So, this um, you know, excuse us. We're, we're really early. It's still like a preview, but we've got no uh, 16 new levels in the game in addition to the old levels. Um, we've got some more street courts in this version of the game because we have this whole, you know, open world mode, which we'll get to in a minute. Right. Um, I'm actually going to jump into uh, the North Hollywood prep. Um, level. We've got uh, our UI team is, you know, we've got a, a whole new UI. So now it's kind of like, if you notice, like Ballers 1 was a little more hip hop. This is like a little more like Sean John style, mm -hmm. you know, a little more like rock aware. It's, it's got like this kind of, you know, this like this cool look to it. Like is that why he shows Chauncey Billups to be the cover athlete? Well, yeah. I mean, Chauncey's, Chauncey's a cool guy. I mean, Chauncey is, you know, obviously with the NBA reinventing their image, Chauncey isn't like this bling bling guy. Right. But he's also, you know, he's. I still saw like the huge diamond taking up the corner of the, yeah. of, the of the main menu though. Yeah, well. <laughs> All right, so the, the, is this loading up right here? Yeah, the the flying's you know a little a little messy right no now. No problem. We'll we just want to see that. We just want to see the game. And of course, um, ballers will like ballers. Speaking I'm like ballers. One will be at a full beautiful 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. Now, has the gameplay changed at all? Um, it has. Some of the stuff from Ballers 1, um, you know, that we, we basically went on, like, you know, the, all the message boards, Game FAQ, we did focus group tests, GameSpot, everywhere, and said, you know, what do you guys like, what do you guys don't like, you know, what can we do to improve the game? So you'll notice this time around, some of the complaints, like, dudes were uh, jumping for dunks under the basket, hitting their head on the rim. You I, li know? I like that. What? Yeah, I like hitting my head in the rim. I thought, you know, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, but you did. It got in the way, though. But yeah, go on. <laughs> so anyway, um, like guys from the outside were making three-pointers way more than, than they should. So we've tweaked all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we have like 30 new active fool moves in the game. Um, we've got active fool shots now that are in the game. So we actually have trick shots. A lot of you guys, you know, when you're, when you're doing your writing, you're saying, you know, why aren't there trick shots in games? Mm -hmm. You know, Ballers Phenom now has trick shots. I'm going to jump out of here real quick and cool. um, show you some of the other stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun. We're working day and night to try to make this, you know, a cool game, and and you know we've got you know mandatory ten to ten hours and let's go, Saturdays. And now, well, now let's let, <laughs> let's go back to you talking about how the NBA is reinventing its image. Yeah. And uh, now Midway just came out with a football game that had a lot of fun by not having to go by a strict set of guidelines yeah. imposed upon it. Uh, what? How are you dealing with the NBA? What have they made you change? Like for one thing, I've noticed in the one trailer that's out so far is that. All of the athletes playing the games are wearing their team uniforms. Well, right. Um, that is mainly actually because uh, we're still in the process of getting all the alternate outfits. All right, good. I, I was worried. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. We're, we're still we're still gonna have all that cool stuff that you saw in Ballers One. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain rules now. 
Um, the league doesn't want you know the guys to to be wearing necklaces and jewelry. I mean that's that's not really you know their image anymore. It's more about suits. It's more about being classy and professional. David Stern's asked that and. You know, he's he's their boss, and he's the one who's he's writing like the, the checks. The Don, right, right. So I mean, <laughs> if David Zucker asks me, "Hey, wear a suit every day to work," you know, I'm writing you million dollar checks. Hey, no problem, DC. <laughs> I'll take care of it. You know. <laughs> Done. So, so what? Ha so has the NBA asked you to do anything beyond absolutely, that? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they've just said, you know, tone it down a little bit, but let's let's make it classy and professional. Mm -hmm. It can still be about the lifestyle, but let's not make it crazy. And so, like, there are some things like they've made us they've made us take uh, necklaces off the NBA players. Mm -hmm. So now we don't have guys, you know, like rocking big jewelry, but we can have like watches and earrings and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They can have gear, you know. They don't have to always be wearing their jerseys. They can have different stuff. Right here, we're looking at the uh, the opening uh, movie for the game. Mm -hmm. Um, this opening movie, basically it sets up the premise for the story. It's NBA Finals week, we're in Hollywood, and um, the NBA is celebrating all things basketball. Mm -hmm. And so they're hosting a series of streetball tournaments, and the number one ranked streetball player at the end of the week gets a check for a million dollars, nice, and uh, also gets a chance to be drafted in the league. Now throughout all this, as you see in these cutscenes here, we've got hot sauce. Um, Hot Sauce, who of course was uh, part of And One, and mm -hmm. uh, now is you know his own entity in itself. He's a part of the game. He's his own little celebrity, and um, Hot Sauce plays the main antagonist. And um, what happens is the backstory is that you and Hot Sauce are buddies. Hot Sauce then tells these agents, you know, it's not about you, Rich. You know, nothing. It was about me. I was the one who brought everything, you know, to the court. And so Hot Sauce, you know, jibs you out of a deal, mm -hmm. and then he steals your girlfriend, as you're seeing right here. Oh, that's not nice. Yeah. Look at that, though. <laughs> um, so he takes your girlfriend, and then um, basically it's now it's finals week. You're there, and it's time to take everything back. Mm -hmm. And so um, along the way, you run into Chauncey Billups. We actually have some of the NBA athletes lending their voices to the story. How'd they do? Okay. Did all right? Yeah, I mean, they need direction. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, so does everybody, right? So um, we had, uh, you know, Chauncey in the studio. We've got another secret NBA player I can't really talk about who's um, lending his voice, and uh, Ludacris is also in the game. Oh, okay. Um, as you play through the game, like in the background, uh, depending which tournaments you play and, and how you decide to progress to the story, uh, you either become like this urban entrepreneur or you become this uh, NBA you know, superstar. And so if you choose to follow Ludus path, you, know, you see him in cutscenes, he's encouraging you, you know, I want you to do this, you know, I want you to, it's all about the clothes, it's all about building your own empire. If you follow him and do what he wants to do, then you get that into the game. If you follow Chauncey, who's like, it's about the love of the game, man. It's about, you know, let's, let's be on top, let's, it's, you know, follow, go to the NBA coaching clinics, you know, do all this kind of stuff. If you mm -hmm. follow Chauncey, then um, it's a totally different ending. And they're always like back and forth, BSing with each other, whatever. Nice. And in between all this, you get to straight up run around on the streets yeah. in LA. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're, we're going to get to that right now. So this, so this is you? Yeah, well, no. No. <laughs> this, is, this is me on the weekends. Right. Basketballer. Uh, with the ba now, now, you said no chains on the players, chains on, on you, though? No, or? chains absolutely Don't. on your own character. All right. I just, we can't put LeBron, you know, rocking a $100,000 piece, right. you know, and jewelry and Can you put him in, like, an old man beard, though, and make him, you know, put Oh, yeah, you can make your character, you can make your character any yeah. way you want. I mean, it was just like, you know, Ballers 1 got a lot of props for its create a baller system, mm -hmm. or create a player system. And, um, you know, we've expanded on it. We've put a lot of RPG elements in the game. So now it's like, um, depending on which position you play, um, you, you choose your character to be. We have, like, maximum and minimum attribute thresholds. So if you decide to be, like, a center, um, your character can be, you know, seven foot two, uh, maximum, or I'm sorry, minimum height, you know, seven foot eight maximum. Mm -hmm. And he can have 100 in dunking, but can never have more than, like, 60 in three point shooting. Ah. So it's kind of like that RPG style, like, it's like the race class, you know, if you mm -hmm. will. Are you, you know, a warrior or a mage or right. whatever. Um, in this scene right here, we've got the uh, NBA attendant who hands you um, the T Mobile sidekick. Um, that's like, a, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, that's, that's part of the whole lifestyle. Right. But that's, you know, one of the ways we convey more of the story text messages, voicemail messages, that kind of thing. So, cool. Yeah. Now, uh, is, is there any way you can import players uh, from the previous game? Um, we're toying with it, we're yeah. thinking about it. Um, it's just, it's tough. It's, you know, We've changed the way some of the systems work. Right. So, um, in since like now attributes are on a scale from you know zero to two hundred as opposed to zero to one hundred. Mm -hmm. But we definitely want to do something where if you've got your ballers one save file, mm -hmm. we unlock something cool. Maybe, nice. Uh, maybe an old school uh, midway arcade game. Oh, ooh, ooh, that'd be, that'd be a nice. game spot uh, yeah. exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, you get it. Well, let's run. Around, let's run around the streets real yeah, quick. Yeah, it's all out there. All right, cool. Um, 
we also have, while the screen is loading, we've mm -hmm. got this, uh, we've got the MTV license, and um, as you play through these different tournaments and as you win tournaments now, um, you unlock NBA player episodes from MTV Cribs. Nice. So, maybe if they got one with Scottie Pippen's yacht. Maybe, yeah, then I'll believe see, you. Yeah, right? Yeah, because <laughs> that thing is huge. All right, what about the soundtrack to the game? Is that locked soundtrack, down? Soundtrack, yeah. Uh, yeah, totally locked down. Um, we're working on it. Our licensing department and our legal department's busting butt. Um, 35 original songs. You know, the all first right. one was 21 songs. Mm -hmm. This one's 35. Um, all original songs, done by underground guys, but also done by some uh, above ground guys. So we've got like uh, Manny Fresh uh, is on the soundtrack. You know, he's moved like 25 million albums, or whatever. We've got Chingy, Bubba Sparks, Gorilla Black, Freeway, Neo. You know, all those hip hop guys. In addition to that, there are also going to be hopefully playable characters. Cool. Big plans. All right. So now you're on the streets. What, what are the kind of things you can do here? Okay. So. Um, Michael Jordan cast in the Windy City style. We got a basketball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I promise you it's going to be better than that. Don't worry. Is that the unlockable game? Or is that, <laughs> yeah, that? no, that's, that, was oh, that, sorry, that wasn't that was you. All right, my bad. Game, oh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> um, so you can actually bounce the ball off of objects in the environment. Here, I threw it off a mailbox. Mailbox yields a diamond. Um, mm -hmm. Each of the neighborhoods have five different diamonds hidden around in them. Um, you collect them all and then take them to a jeweler at the end of the game. It gives you a new piece. We have different vendors. Um, vendors what sell different kid? food items. Uh, like only in story mode the uh, can you acquire these food the items. And then in game, um, you can press a button, open up your backpack, mm -hmm. and then consume that food. And it gives you a temporary buff to your attributes, like 30 seconds on fire, that kind of thing. Like, like a chili dog will do. Huh? Like a chili dog will do. Yeah. It'll definitely set you on fire. Yeah, definitely. So how big are the cities you can walk, the areas you can walk around? Um, you know, it's certainly not, and I don't want anyone to be confused, it's definitely not like a Grand Theft Auto style right. you know, city. And a sports gamer doesn't want something like that. There, um, if you look at like a Baller's One Court, it's like six to eight times the size of a Baller's One Court. Nice. Um, in our engine, what's incredible is that, you know, totally was not designed to handle this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But our awesome tech team and awesome art team has managed to squeeze as much power as they can out of the engine. And, and build this. Here's an example of another vendor where I can go out and buy different types of basketballs here. Mm -hmm. um, 12 different balls in the game. You got a lot of money. Now, how do you earn money? I'm guessing you don't start out with uh, how many no, no, no. Is that? $10 million? No, that's, that's Johnny Ballers, man. That's, okay. that's why he's got all that money. But um, these guys right here, like, <laughs> they've got exclamation points above their head. Those mm -hmm. are uh, different side mission guys. Earn money by running side missions, um, earn money by uh, participating in winning tournaments. Um, and we've got like a lot of you know cause and effect stuff. Like here, for instance, um, there's the VIP area back there, you know, and I throw the ball off the light, diamond pops. In addition, to that security guard runs over there. Mm -hmm. and now there's an open area back here where I can go pick up another diamond. There's more vendors and more stuff back there. It's a different part of the world that I unlocked. So it's interesting, for, especially for a sports game, you know. So we will have a, a full preview of, of this on the site tomorrow, and we'll have gameplay footage as well. Uh, when's this game coming out? Uh, spring. Spring. Spring of this year? Yeah. All right, wonderful. Spring of this year. <laughs> you never know. You gotta, this we'll, guy wants a problem. Need... <laughs> Anything else you want to say about the game before we move on to uh, the show? Or? Nothing. Just NBA Ballers Phenom, Spring 2006. I hope everyone likes it. hope you like it. We will like it. This game looks great. I like that's, it right now. That's what's here. That's All right. But right now, we're, we're going to be playing NBA Ballers Rebound on the PSP Ooh, wait shortly. Wait you see that. Shortly. Not yet, though. But right now, we're going to kick it back over to Ryan Davis and uh, Brad Shoemaker with Metal Gear 3 Subsistence. Uh, on the J uh, Japanese version, online, take away phones. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to take a little baller break here for a second. Do you want to, we, we don't want to get too balled out first. Uh, I'm, so I'm here with uh, uh, Brad Shoemaker. Brad, what's up? How's it going, Ryan David? I'm well. You've right. got this copy of Metal Gear Solid yes. 3 Subsistence. Straight from Japan. Fresh from Japan. This yep. just came out there. Uh, it's not coming here for a couple of months. Yeah, March. Uh, but this is a remade version of Metal Gear Solid 3. Tons of stuff. It's three it's, discs. It's huge. It's, there's, I mean, yeah, inside the package, look. we've got the package, we've got all this stuff. There's one disc, there's a book, there's another there's, disc. There's. I think there's like 40 DVDs in there. There's a ton of stuff. There's like making of stuff. There's, yeah. there's a lot of cinematic stuff in here. It's, but the coolest new thing about this has to be the inclusion of multiplayer. There's online multiplayer in yeah. this for the first time in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I mean, fans have been waiting for years for Metal Gear to hit online, but it's not... It's not a bunch of guys sneaking around trying to break each other's necks. It's actually more of an out-and-out -out shooter. You know, it's more kind of straight-up, well, kind of Counter-Strike style, actually. Just, so, so you've so got it here. We're Let's actually, jump into it. We're connected right now. Um, uh, we're going to check out the menu browser right here, see what kind of games we got going. Uh, the game has four or five different modes in it. Uh, it's got your standard deathmatch and team deathmatch. Um, I'm going to jump into a rescue game right here. Okay. That's a, it's a, oh, no, I'm not, actually. Let's see, I think that might be full right now. 
So you're playing all with just Japanese. Yeah. This is, yeah, you're, you're going overseas well, for just, this stuff right let's now. Let's jump into a deathmatch game. Yeah, it's, let's, let's keep in mind that it's like 8 in the morning over there right now, so these games are going to be kind of... So people just before are, getting off these, to work... These are, gonna, like, these are like the diehard dudes that have been up all night playing or whatever. But Now, uh, before we actually get into the multiplayer game, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit uh, more about the single-player game because they have made okay. changes to that as yeah. well. It's, it's essentially the entire Snake Eater experience. Uh, the big difference is it's got a third-person camera now, so... It's kind of Splinter Cell style. It's it's right behind you, so you can kind of see all around you. Now, previously it was around. like at fixed positions. It was like a locked top down. So, and w the way the enemies hide in the underbrush in this game, it's really hard to figure out what's going on if you can't, you know, move the camera around. Your, yeah, look at your surroundings all the time. So, so. here you are. All right, what's so what's going on are. here? This here is just, this is just a deathmatch game. Yeah, I'm just picking out some. So you're gonna pick out here. your weapons I'm go here. With the shotgun. So we're Got seeing like a lot of the. Is there is there additional weapons uh, aside from what it's, was featured in uh, Snake Eater? It's basically all the stuff from the game. There is a new flamethrower that uh, uh, one of the bosses, the Fury, used in the original game. Oh, I oh Franz just Kafka just gave you the right business. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's basically all the weapons that you know and love from the single player game, except for the flamethrower. Um, so this is this is straightforward. Everyone's just killing everyone else. But there are yeah. other. More bizarre match types in this oh, game. Oh yeah, is that there's right? uh, like I said, there are some team-based types. My favorite is capture the frog. Capture the frog. Not not capture the flag. Capture That's not, the you're not frog. Being racist, no, 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 absolutely okay. not. That's <laughs> no, it is it is actually a small endearing amphibian that you're trying so to. So I seen the little cartoon frog. Yeah, it's a little karopi, but uh, so other other than the fact that it is a frog, it's basically like one flag CTF. Um, it's just two teams trying to get to this frog and deliver it to their goal point to score. Basically, so. All right, well, while you try not to die here, can I throw some questions sure. at you? Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, Daniel Stark from Denmark wants to know, uh, has there been any news if the third disc will be available in the U.S. and Europe? They haven't talked about that yet, but I don't see why not. The third disc, if you're wondering, is uh, they actually... Oh, you're getting shot. Yeah, I'm getting shot at. Let's see if I can talk and not die at the same time. Uh, basically, the third disc is uh, they took all the... Oh, I'm dead. No. They took all the cinematic scenes from Snake Eater and essentially cut them together into a three-hour movie. So you can basically just pop this disc into, I don't know if it's just PS2, it might even run in a regular DVD player, but you can basically watch Snake Eater the movie. So this is for people who, who like the Metal Gear Solid, yeah. like the story stuff and all the drama that comes along yeah, with it, yeah. but aren't really into the sneaking around thing. Yeah, yeah, so there's no word yet for sure, but I don't see why not. It's mean, for people who are tired of hitting start. Basically. <laughs> that's, that's correct. Excellent. Uh, another question, MX148 from London wants to know, uh, online will there be a rank system like Halo 2 or Rainbow Six? Uh, yes, that is the end of the question. Is uh, there online ranking? Let's uh, hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, the menus in this version are all totally Japanese, so if you're going to import this, the game, the gameplay itself, all English, so you can play it fine, but as far as the player rankings and stuff, kind of hard to comprehend if you don't read Japanese, so uh, one we, can't, more we can't know for sure, basically, until it comes out here. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, one more from Stu in Waialua, Hawaii. Stewie. Stewie wants to know, uh, is there going to be an Xbox version with live support? Not, doesn't, doesn't look, doesn't like, look it. like it. I mean, it took. I mean, uh, substance came Su out. Uh, yeah, sustenance. I think it was came out on the Xbox eventually, but um, I don't think so. I really wouldn't count on it, to be honest. All right. Well, we've seen the deathmatch. Can we jump into some of these other crazy modes? Yeah. Let me, so let we've me. seen we've seen the capture the or we've talked about. about yeah, there, there's actually the a very large preview on the site that details all you need to know about capture the frog. Excellent. Um, and we just had. Well, a let's look at. I want to see this ghost thing. I keep on like catching glimpses of the like some sort of. Oh, the the, the ethereal. Ghost collecting. Yeah. Okay. So What's there's. Let's see if I can find a game running. Yes. Yeah, so Show that to me. Here, here we go. So there's a Counter mode. Strike. I think I've heard of that. that oh, that one's not going to let me in. There's. Uh, here's another one. There's a mode called, oh, I can't get into that one either. There's a mode called Rescue in this, which is another team-based mode. Um, it's the most Counter-Strike-like because... That's dancing. Go, go there, just go there, <laughs> just right. try. Well, that's a death match, but... Um, <laughs> but it's a great name here, for it. Here's a Rescue. Okay, I'm in. So Rescue. So, rescue is a team-based mode. It's a lot like Counter-Strike in that if you die, you're out for the rest of the round. Okay. Um, so please one, try not to die. I'll try not to. One, one team spawns with uh, possession of a rubber ducky, actually. They like their small... They like, aquatic, they like their, their aquatic, back toys, yeah, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Kojima. But, uh, Freak. So, <laughs> so one, uh, one team... Oh, I'm a ghost right now. You're actually. a ghost. One, one team spawns with the rubber ducky, and they're just attempting to protect it for the round. And the other team is trying to take that team out and take the rubber ducky and deliver it to their goal point. So that's how they score. And then, of course, you can also win just by, you know, killing everybody. But uh, as you can see, I've spawned in as a ghost here. I have to actually wait until one team wins. 
before we can get into a new round. But in the meantime, I can actually cycle through some of the other players. Oh, who's that? So, so I, all I've seen so far have been kind of like just the soldier, grunty-looking character models. Gargan. There's other like crazy stuff in there for characters. You can right? actually, uh, strangely enough, you can actually unlock some of the Rumble Roses characters. It's, one, it's Konami's kind of a uh, buxom uh, wrestling game, if you're yes. familiar with that property. So you can play as these... Uh, Scandally clad Japanese wrestler. But that's not who this girls. is. No, this is um, <laughs> this is Doctor. This is Doctor. What's his name? I can't remember his name from Snake Eater. But uh, okay, so this is a character. Yeah, from um, from Snake Eater. We've actually been told we haven't done it in this version yet, but we've been told you can unlock uh, characters from Snake Eater like Revolver Ocelot, and they'll supposedly have special abilities that you can use in the multiplayer. Is that something that you have to do through the single player game? Uh, uh, yet Presumably, to be, yet to be determined. We we would assume so. That's, Very cool. Uh, yes. So, There's nothing going on here. Uh, yeah, the rescue the rescue matches tend to proceed kind of slowly because once you die, you just see like like I said, I'm just running around as a ghost here. There's really nothing you can do. You can make some sounds as a ghost to kind of freak the other players out. Well, cool. So people can read all about this. We actually have yeah. two recent previews up yeah. on the site. Yeah, Greg uh, Greg got all into the the import over Christmas break, and then we just put up a new preview yesterday that has more information about all this multiplayer this stuff. Game is out now in Japan. If you're that kind of person, and it comes out. Uh, in the U.S., March 14th, I believe. So sometime in March. March. Yeah, March. March. Let's say March. March. Well, excellent. Thank you, Brad, for Thank coming you. by Thanks and for showing me. this off to us. Absolutely. Uh, next up, we've got more ballers with Rich. Rich. Thanks, Ryan. No hey, I'm here with John Pinyaki from Midway. How's it going, John? It's going good. It's going good. All right. Welcome back. Oh, my bad. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it some knuckle. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we're playing uh, Rebound. It's on the PSP, correct? It is. Wonderful. Now, this is just a port from the old game, right? Nothing changed? Dude. <laughs> okay. It, this is not like some, like, ape escape. Oh, we'll put it on PSP and everyone will buy it. Right. This is actually a new version of the old version uh, okay. that was released in 2004. All right. Updated rosters, you know, your typical EA treatment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> updated rosters, updated graphics, new levels, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So we'll take a look. What's cool, though, is if, if you pick up the PSP and play this game, I mean, it is totally awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really, really impressed with it. And the guys at Backbone are the ones that, that worked on it for us. And uh, Tracy Johnson, our producer uh, on Ballers Phenom, kind of oversaw the entire thing. And it just it's turned out fantastic. I mean, I own a PSP, and as a gamer, you know, like, about the only games I have are, like, Ridge Racer and Liberty City Stories. And now that, you know, I have seen not, Ballers... Not, not Luminous? Oh, yeah, Luminous. Oh, yeah, 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 I've got the yeah. Luminous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now that I've played Ballers on that, I'm like totally impressed with, with it. You know, speaking as a gamer, not someone who's trying to sell this to. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll take a look at it right now. That's cool. So, so what, what is new? What have, what have they added besides? So I'm guess some, some rookies are now. Well, in the yeah, game, we've, a lot of the things that we talked about earlier with um, like in regards to modifying some of the things that people didn't like with the original Ballers, mm -hmm. all those like you know attribute things and rules and everything. We've we've modified all that, so it's a lot. It's a lot more uh, a lot more tight game. And in addition to that, we've like you know made the attributes more more important. You know, it's we had some attributes in Ballers One that you know you could you could pump stats into, but they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've actually made them you know make make some sort of sense now. So, nice. Um, it's cool. It's it's a much more well-rounded title than the first one, and I encourage anyone who hasn't played Ballers One to definitely pick this up, especially if you have a PSP. Now I gotta ask. Not too many people have done much with it, but is there any interaction between this game and the PS2 game or? Um, no comments. No, all right, no, no worries. No, worries. I, I got, no, no, got, no, 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 no comments. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, yeah. it's all right. It's all right. All right. So we're just getting into a one-on-one uh, -on -one game right here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Super Nat, who's the host of the original game, uh, mm. returns as the host of the PSP version. Minus three, le four letters at the end, I guess. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, but yeah, this is uh, it's great. And, I mean, once you get your hands on it and you see that uh, you know at a retail kiosk or whatever, you'll definitely uh, see exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, that, some of the effect is lost for us as we play this on a giant television. Oh, I know. But, I mean, That's what's such a disaster it's, it's, about it looks this. It still looks great. Oh, It's not a disaster. Sorry, sorry, what are you guys. talking oh, about? Sorry, yeah. You put your hand in it, that'll make, that'll yeah. make it a disaster. You do yeah. that, that's not going to do anything good. <laughs> hey, but. easy, man. We're trying, to, we're trying to pimp this game. This, this looks game. great. I mean, yeah. they got, we're streaming on the internet, so the, yeah. the, it's a 320 by 240 window. Everyone's watching this on, so it's, right. it still looks great. Trust and, me. And if they're not subscribers, they're, uh, what, they have to see a bunch of advertisements too, right? No, they, no, they don't. Oh. Yeah. Okay. On the spot, we're nice like that. <laughs> but all right, so we got the immortal Tim Thomas versus Tim Thomas dream match going yeah, on. Yeah, can you believe that? Yeah. Who is really the better player between himself? Yeah, Tim. He's a legend. Is he playing for Chicago right now? Is that where he is? Uh, I have no idea. I thought he was in Milwaukee or something. <laughs> All right. Well, so 
Is there uh, one of the one of the best parts about the PSP? It's you can take it anywhere. Wireless, is absolutely. Multiplayer, yes. Wireless, uh, ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've tested it at the office. It's very fun. Um, and you know, we've added new gear within the the Crate of Baller. We've added new levels to the game. Mm -hmm. um, right here, we're at Steph's crib from the first game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've touched it up a little bit. It's still Sky Pippen's giant yacht. Yeah. All right. You keep bringing that up. Now I'm going to call Pip on the phone, and you, we'll, we'll go out there. I, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> All right, now for some people who don't know, who haven't played the first NBA Ballers, right. it, it is a rags to riches game. Yeah, it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, basketball game. Mm -hmm. um, the, the big draw of it uh, was that it was the first sports game that had a story mode. Um, the game mode is called Rags to Riches. You know, you create your own character. Your attributes as you progress throughout the different tournaments are auto-upgraded so that they actually match your playing style. If you uh, shoot lots of three-pointers um, while you're playing the game, your character's three-point ability will actually increase. If you do lots of dunks, you know, you'll actually be a better dunker. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, even with Ballers 1, you know, released in 2004, um, we started to touch on some of those role-playing game aspects, and um, you know it's certainly in the PSP version, and it's also you know we you see us expanding on it in the uh, Phenom PS2 and Xbox version. And you also have uh, you also have uh, friends on the sidelines. You can toss the yeah. ball to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go through. You can buy cars for your dream crib. Right. And at the end of the game, you get to unlock it. Absolutely. And beat up on Scotty Pippen there. Yeah, and you can take your uh, created mansion um, online. You know, play against friends. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's you know it's it's very it's a very impressive product and I can't stress enough you know you got to get your hands on it and and feel it. And uh, has the soundtrack changed at all? The soundtrack has actually mm -hmm. the uh, incredible music supervision um, that uh, lent its talents to uh, the Ballers Phenom soundtrack mm -hmm. has also uh, agreed to <laughs> have some of the songs from uh, Phenom appear. So it's an all new soundtrack. Um, this uh, it's uh, I believe 19 songs. And um, some of the same songs appear in the Phenom soundtrack, so that's cool. It's a new touch. Great. Any, anything else we're missing, or that's it? That's it. Yeah. Oh, thanks, John. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, it. man. Is this coming out in spring too? Or? Yeah, I'm not. It's snapping. actually. Yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> this kid. It's gonna be. Um, it's gonna be released uh, right around the same time Phenom is. So definitely take a look for it uh, if you're a PSP gamer. Great. Thanks a lot, John. Cool. And once again, there'll be a full preview of this uh, on the site tomorrow. Great. Cool. Let's send it back to Ryan and Brad. What you guys got? I, we're balled out over here. That's it. We're done. I can ball it was, no you more. ball until you fall, and we fell. So, <laughs> so now it's just time for RPGs. Brad, you brought uh, Tales of, of Legendia. Tales Legendia? Of Legendia. Legendia. Uh, we're saying it, Legendia. Legendia. You know, Let's take, stick with take, it. Take your pick. So this is the latest in Namco's long, yeah, yeah, long-running uh, Tales you've, series. You've had Tales of Symphonia, Eternia, uh, Fantasia, Destiny. Tales of Destiny, that's one of the earlier they, ones. Yeah, they've been they've been spinning these yarns for a long time now. So, so you, we've got this here. This, this, this is some sort of crazy... We're going to show the intro. Is this is yeah. like the first time this stuff's been seen. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's just, so, let's just so soak it up here. We're jumping right here into the intro of Tales of Legendia. Now, is the, is the Tales of... Uh, the Tales of series, yes. uh, is that kind of like the... Uh, uh, the Final Fantasy, where like each one is not related to yeah, the others. they're for the most part, yeah. I mean, they obviously they share a lot of gameplay conventions. You know, fans of the series expect to see the same kind of gameplay, but uh -huh. yeah, typically you know, new characters, new world, all that kind of stuff. So, so what is happening uh, so far in this world? We've got uh, Senel and Shirley here yeah, on some sort they, of airship. They throw us in kind of in medias race. It's all right in the middle of these these crazy events. Uh, it's the brother and sister who are on the ship, and uh, here we are. Oh getting, my God, what is that? Getting attacked by a crazy sea monster. Um, so this so, is this is we're looking at the very beginning yeah, of this, this game. Yeah, this is this is literally just started a new game. Uh, so they just sort of throw you in, and as you can see, Sea Monster is attacking. Now, I see a lot of text in here, but uh, I seem when I was watching you playing this earlier, there there was a lot of speech. In oh it yeah, as well. full full voice acting from what I've seen so far. Uh, you'll actually if if you're into anime, you'll probably recognize a lot of the voice actors, the, a lot of the the people that'll pop up in your favorite animated series. So. So the monsters still coming out here. Are you actually controlling this part yeah, right, of it? Right now, it's basically just kind of you know hit the button through the dialogue. Okay, but it is it is kind of an interactive intro sequence yeah, here. Yeah, and we'll actually get a battle here in just a second. So you Fantastic. Can check out the combat engine, which is as you'd expect. It's it's pretty consistent with past games. And what is that like? Tell me about um, the, it's, with the combat. It's actually a weird hybrid of kind of button mashing combat and RPG stuff because you've got your special attacks, you know, your stats figure into your abilities, but you're actually hitting buttons to punch and swing your sword. You have to and roll that kind for of initiative. Thing. No, 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 no Thaco to worry about or anything like that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so you're you're taking a pretty active role in the battles. Uh, you're you're generally only controlling one character. Um, 
Right now, I only have one character, but later on, you'll pick up others who are generally controlled by AI. Now, will you, will you just like, can you trade out on the fly, or is it just like you go into the battle with one character uh, and then that's all you got? Let me play it some more and get back to you. <laughs> all right. We will have a full uh, a preview of full this preview. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is that right? tomorrow. Check out the site tomorrow. We'll have, uh, yeah. Excellent. So now, now you're about to get into the yep. business here, here. Here we are, actually, with the battle, jumping right oh, in. Oh, crazy sparkly effects. And then, and here we are. Fight. So, you're fighting a Zephyr. So as I said, I'm actually hitting the X button repeatedly. So you're mashing on the X button. I'm, I'm watching you. Yes, you're and occasionally, occasionally some circle. In fact, uh, you've got you've got a number of uh, special so this is a, attacks. This is almost like a brawler in a, a way. A little bit, a little bit. I but mean, I mean, you, so your character stats do figure into it. Right, but uh, you gain new special attacks as you level up. Uh, as I said, you'll have AI characters helping you out later, and you can actually predefine their behaviors. So if you want them to heal you more often, they'll do that, or you can make them attack more. So, obviously the plot is uh, moving right it along here. It is thickening. Yes. He, he had some misgivings about uh, that monster. Yes, as a matter of fact. I believe that it might not be a monster. Goodness gracious. The plot does thicken. Well, uh, we don't want to give away too much of this No, game. no. I mean, it, it, comes with, it comes with all the RPG trappings, you know. you got all the fixings here. You've got... Mysterious girl, you know, there's an ancient prophecy, all that kind of stuff that you'd hope for. So, uh, battling kingdoms, stuff like that, strife, yeah, yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Cool. So it, it definitely picks up after this intro sequence. In fact, as you're seeing right here. But no more for the people. Yeah, no, you don't, we don't want to. We have to make them wait till tomorrow to see. Here's get a little yeah. glimpse of the the anime. Read read the preview tomorrow to find out more. But uh, yeah. Well, it, excellent. It's, well, it's coming. Okay, and it's coming for, soon. It's, it's coming, coming in, uh, right around the 1st of right February, around. I believe. See this act. You keep playing this. You send it over to us, and we'll see, and we'll go back to you when you got some action going okay. on. Okay. We, we owe it to the people. Thanks, guys. Hi, Jeff. What's up? Welcome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's up? All right. Cool. So you brought, one of my favorite parts about this show uh -huh. is that when people like you bring crazy games on here that people out there wouldn't generally see. Yeah. And we got Bite Hell 2000. With the sweet BS2000 cover right, there. Right, yeah. yeah. Nobody beats Bite Hell 2000. What, what is Bite Hell 2000? Uh, Bite Hell 2000 is uh, the sequel to a uh, very uh, limited run PlayStation game mm -hmm. uh, made by these two psychopaths. And uh, they've, they've done it again for the PSP. And basically, it's like a mini game collection, sort of like WarioWare, mm -hmm. uh, but somehow far more insidious. Right. Uh, you're basically embarking on a number of part time jobs. And uh, earning money to unlock more part-time jobs. It's an endless cycle. Right. Uh, so why don't we just uh, we can get into one right here. This this one's pretty. By the way, intense. Brad and Ryan, if you guys want if you want to be the peanut gallery on this, feel free because this isn't this kind of like the anti WarioWare. It sort of is because these aren't these are micro games in that you're doing one thing, but you do it forever. <laughs> it's they're really long and really so, tedious, aren't in, they? In this game here, I'm capping pens. All right, yeah, let's um, fire this up. Let's, let's see the, the pen cap. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. So. You put the caps on the pens. And that's it. And <laughs> Oh, but sometimes the pens are upside sometimes, down. Sometimes, sometimes. This oh, one's upside oh, now, down. Oh, i got to flip oh, it. Oh, i got to flip it. Now, if you guys probably are, this isn't coming through because of how big it is, but if you see these, num these, these here, these are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, He's up to 22 right there. This is hypothetically how, how many pens you can cap, correct? Yeah. a whole. Uh, but basically, so you never lose in this game. It never ends mm -hmm. until you just say, you know what? I can't cap any more damn pens. <laughs> so you see? quit. It gives you a paycheck. You we got, got 99, 99 yen yeah. out of that one. And uh, basically, it feeds you up the jobs four at a time at random. Um, so you're kind of stuck doing them over here. We got. Uh, oh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, this this one's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, I, I actually sort of similar to, to the pen capping. It is. You're, sor you're sorting. All right, you got dead birds. Dead bird. Oh god. Gir oh. Girl, girl bird. Girl bird. Girl bird boy, boy bird. Boy bird. Dead, dead bird. bird. Now, if I if I throw living birds into the dead bird pile, uh -huh. that dude's pretty pissed oh. off about it. <laughs> oh. oh. He totally eats. He, he's like, like, oh. I don't think he's upset. I think he's happy. I think, he's I happy that you're that's killing death, all the shit. Yeah, he's killing yeah. Them, yeah. So I won't probably won't make much money for that because I threw a bunch of living ones in there. Right, you got three dollars. Whopping yeah. three yen. That's not bad. Uh, so that's, basically, that's it, it kind of proceeds like that with uh, a whole lot of crazy mm -hmm. uh, business. We've got uh, some actually some pretty clever parodies of NES games. So this, this is pr this is the practice mode you just jumped into. Yeah. So this right. one we're not earning money anymore. Right. This is just any of the games you've unlocked. And so here I have to throw balls to first base. You're shag shagging some uh, ground balls and, and fly balls. And the, 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 the coach and the first baseman have skulls yeah, for heads. Yeah, skulls for heads, and the first baseman's wearing a crown because 
That's pretty cool. Because he's the king. Yeah. Awesome. And you just l literally do this forever. Yeah. But this one you can lose if a couple yeah, get by if, you. Yeah, if, if three of them get you by you, you lose. You so, lose. All right. If I can, oh, you know, you're no oh, good. I'm falling over. Control is very simple and all these. Yeah, it, it, a lot of it's just like real one button, two button things. Mm. So the things you unlock, you unlock more jobs. You unlock a lot of trinkets because it, it uses the ever popular Japanese capsule machine concept. Mm -hmm. So you're always getting like little uh, spinning top or a tiny car. Can we, we got, you have a hundred bucks. You want to buy one right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll jump in. Yeah. And, uh, and How do you know something. what the menus are like? Did you just I, try? You, you just fumble through them, mm -hmm. and eventually it makes sense. I don't. I don't read any Japanese. So these are the hundred dollar machines. Yeah, and they're, they get they get more expensive. They do. They go all the way up to five thousand yen, but this one's just a a hondo. So oh, a wow. new game. A, really? That, that's a wow. Let's, let's fire it up. Let's see what's it. I don't even know what it that's is. That's awesome. Oh, oh man! That's always excited here on okay. the spot. All right, where is it? Where Where are we at? Okay, it might, it's a tool. Oh, it's a, right, it's so a what's tool a tool menu. then? So, okay, yes, that's the thing. You get jobs, mm -hmm. you get stupid little trinkets, mm -hmm. and you get these tools here, mm -hmm. um, like this one, which I don't even know what it's, it's about. Five it's five, five, five versus five. It's five versus five. Who knows five. what's going to happen? Five versus five tool. Feeling partner. Five uh, versus I don't even five. Know. I don't even know where she go here. I don't even know where she uh, uh, starts. We're going to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got All a little... Right. Yep, All right. All right. Now, some of these uh, tools, you said you have no idea what to do with them because it, there's a lot of Japanese text yeah, involved. Yeah, there's a fair amount. Like here, I, I just entered three symbols. Who knows what's really going yep. on? So, uh, uh, you just typed in something offensive, Jeff. Yeah, you that are one, totally that pissing one, people off. And that one. It's a little blown out anyways. I can't see it, I don't think. But Okay, so I guess this is like, uh, my guess here is this is a lot like the Newlywed, newlywed game. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's sure. my guess. But, so, I love a, the but newlywed you say it's a, it's a tool, not a... Yeah, so uh, there's some handy tools, like the, uh, the eye tool here. Is this that one, eye tool is freaky. This one's great. It, it might lose a little something in translation because I can't hold, the, hold it up to my face and freak people out. Um, but basically, if you hold the PSP up to your face here, and <laughs> you can really scare people. Oh, oh. oh cat face. Hey, kitty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now there's also the option, too. Like that old man, you know, he looks like he's a little bit of a criminal. Yeah. We, maybe we should protect his identity. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. That poor hey, guy. Yeah. What happens if you get hungry while you're playing this game? Well, if you get hungry while you're playing, you know, <laughs> you can, um... This, oh, dear. Uh, there are some really handy tools in here, uh, like this one. Why don't we give this one a shot? I understand you guys have some uh, ramen over there. We have some non-branded uh, ramen over here that uh -huh. you can't see the brand for. But it's messed up because none of us have a clock or a stopwatch. I don't know how to tell how, how long I have no idea. Yeah. All we I know is it has to be in there for three minutes. It yeah, it's supposed to be in there for three it, minutes. Uh, but who can count to three I minutes? I don't have a watch. I That's I where the track. PSP comes in, friends. Really? Nice. How, Jeff? With, le with the ramen timer. <laughs> Let's ramen timer right here, okay? <laughs> oh, God. All right, this guy. All right, you guys at home, you're going to need to turn your heads kind of sideways like this uh, to true, or maybe like this to truly get the most out of this. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll pick three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, you guys ready over there? I've got my hot water. You've got, I've got hot my water. water. All right. All right. Tell me when to pour. You're going to have to watch. I can't see. He'll tell you. He, yeah. What's going on? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, pour it in. Pour. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. I don't think so, sir. Pour faster, dude. It's poured. All right, now close it up. <laughs> Put the lid on it. <laughs> All right, lid's down. <laughs> yep. This is ramen time. This is how I like to spend my time waiting for ramen to cook. <laughs> I know I'm getting hungry. I have actually some literature that I'd like oh, to read. Oh, it's time for ramen master. All right, uh, this is... Pick up, pick up. Well, while we're waiting for our three minutes to fill, uh, we do have uh, something here that will take up three we're minutes. Timing the ramen. Dude. You can, we can keep timing. You can keep showing, right. Mr. Muscle Muscle. But we have now. We have John Latour's napkin-winning essay. Okay, let's hear it. We're gonna read some excerpts. Ryan Davis, you want to start it off? Uh, yes, we'll start off with the excerpt from the the, the third paragraph. Right. This. Is that where we want to start? Yeah, that's a good spot. All right. If I had Tim Tracy's napkin collection, it would muscle, make my muscle. day. I would have a romantic dinner with it, walk along the beach, watch the sunset together, and come Christmas Day, my birthday, I will go up to my family and show them the newest entry into my family, something that normally doesn't happen without involving intercourse. Okay, that's all right, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> it gets a little, it goes a little blue there for a yeah, second. Yeah, what's, what's up about that? Muscle, muscle! <laughs> Ramen muscle! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh gosh, now I've easily gone over the 200 war mark. As I just checked, that just goes to show you my love for this product. He calls it a product. <laughs> yeah, that's no, good. The Tim Tracy napkin collection product. I want to be able to say to the word, who needs friends or relationships when I have Tim Tracy's napkin collection? Yes, I think this product is the greatest thing to be featured on the web besides this delectable share CD. Well, the only thing to do now is wait for my now 200 word essay to be accepted, hopefully, by the illustrious Tim Tracy himself. And Tim Tracy did approve of this himself. And, I, I and the napkins are in the mail. Wherever he yeah. is. Yes. <laughs> Wherever Tim Tracy is. Is this still going on? Well, this is still going. How's he doing? Ramen <laughs> Dude, under, undercooked noodles. What, what I really, what I, what I love the most about this is that this guy had to do this for three minutes. And then another one for four and another one for five. There's also a lady you can watch, not nearly as funny. Yes. <laughs> is that, is that, is, is he wearing like a little gold helmet? What is that? No, it's sunglasses. 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 And a dope chain. He is ready for NBA ballers, yeah. I think. And he, he says, uh, give me the spice, Junior. Uh, At least that's, that's what I imagine right there. he says. He just, <laughs> <laughs> I, this is like the most surreal. This is the most surreal episode we've ever done now because of this. Oh, oh. Oh. Hey. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah! Finish! Well, let's let's see how this All right. is. Oh, how, how is the ramen? Oh, that is that is some perfectly done ramen. Do you guys have a utensil? I don't have. I'm gonna use my pen. <laughs> I'm just gonna get into this here. Oh. Oh. Mm. 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 oh, that's oh. that's that's wonderful. Mm. That's oh. that's great. Oh my god. Yeah. How is it? Is it good? This is really good ramen. Yeah. That awesome. Was awesome. That was perfect. Mm. All right, Jeff. Awesome. Let, let's uh, let's no. hit a couple oh. more. I want to see you stab okay. yourself in the hand. <laughs> all right. All right. So in this that's one here, that's good ramen. That's don't eat all that ramen. No. That's my ramen. Yeah, that's Jeff's ramen. Not anymore. Yeah. Oh, I just steal that ramen. <laughs> all right. What's this one, Jeff? Okay. In this one, you basically get one yen for every time you can successfully put this down without stabbing your fingers. <laughs> so this is known as the aliens mini game. Yeah, exactly. You are a totally bishop right now, and that is. Uh, are Bill, you like at school right now? Is that Bill yeah. Paxton's hand with your shiv? Yeah. Stab, I'm the hand. Hold my shiv. Stab the hand. Stab the hand. We, oh, I'm doing so good. They owe it to themselves. Everyone, you owe it to them to for them to hear the sound. Oh, oh. that is a brutal noise. Yeah. Is there is there is there anything else? Is there is there? Well, you know, there's a, a little wrestling game here, which uh, fans of the Fire Pro Wrestling series will recognize. Uh, it basically looks exactly like Fire Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. So in this one, it's finally the wrestling game that I've wanted made, in that you have to put on a good match and you actually have to look like you're going to lose. Yeah. So basically, this guy's going to kick me and uh, put me on the canvas and try and pin me here. It's like a little, Sting little German Hogan. suplex. So I got to kick out as close to three as possible. Two point nine one. That's good. That's not bad. Bring out the cameras. So basically, you do this three times, and it totals you up. And, and depending on how well you do, you mm -hmm. know how well you put on the match here. Ooh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's the worst right. I've ever seen you do. Yeah, I'm, without I'm, the sound, it's it's hard to get above. It is, like yeah. two nine five is where you want to get it. There you it. go. Oh! oh! You, you blink! Throw the trash! Oh. Throw the trash on the oh, oh, that's terrible. That's a mess. This has oh. gone horribly. Oh, that's it's a disaster. So yeah. Good. I so this game is crazy and mostly in Japanese. This game is, is crazy and... Ask the question, Ryan Davis. Japanese. Ask the is question. Is coming out in the U.S.? No it's, way. It's got to be. It's, it's, it's awesome and it's crazy and hopefully uh, some game publisher will take a chance on it. Um, Sony put it out in Japan, so... Get knows? the noise going, internet. Do yeah, it. Hey, maybe. And maybe start we'll, a petition. Start when an you are. internet petition. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but some games like this would be very hard to translate. This one, uh, basically, you have to take orders uh, in a restaurant. It's not hard to translate. You just got to change the text. Well, yeah, but, do, but uh, you, like, if you import the game, you will not be able to play the exactly, game without yeah, being Japanese. Basically. Yeah. So in this one, another sideways game here. Oh so. gosh. Those people are so demanding of their food. So they're ordering food, and basically I can pull out my little... If you've ever been to a restaurant in Japan, mm -hmm. um, they all the waitresses all have little PDAs, PDAs that yeah. you can use to tick up orders here. Mm -hmm. So I basically have 10 seconds after they stop ordering to uh, pretend that's exactly that I know what, what they're, they're ordering. That's exactly, that's exactly what, they're what they ordered. Yeah, good oh, work. wait, no, I'm no. horribly wrong. You got it every But watch, wrong. they go crazy when you get it wrong. Do they? Do they yell at you? Yeah. Oh, you got one? No, you didn't. Oh, oh God! Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, they're, they're upset and doing the wave. I'm taking my business elsewhere. Yeah, basically. All right, let's get the, let's get out of here. Yeah, okay. All right, we're gonna get some footage of this on the on the site. 
Yeah, we, totally. owe, we owe it to the people. Yeah, we'll have some more gonna, stuff on it tomorrow. We're going to do that, and we're going to make people turn their monitors sideways <laughs> to watch this stuff. It'll be good. Yeah. Hey, uh, Ryan Davis, since uh, you got to sit in my chair for the whole show, you want to send it home? Uh, sure. Do it. Uh, do, we wanna, do we have anything else to say? Is that it? We're done. Excellent. Well, I uh, want to thank... Uh, John Vignocchi. John Vignocchi from, from Midway. I want to thank Brad. I want to thank Jeff. I want to thank the whole crew here. Rich, I'd like to thank you for standing up for the show. It's fun. I told you. 2006, the year of Rich standing up. <laughs> I thought Excellent. this was going to be the year of me sitting down. Nope. I was wrong. You were. No, you, you're standing up. You're young, my friend. Well, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you right here next week on the spot. Nicely done. Uh, Nicely done. <laughs>